Hi friends, Waggers here. In this video I'd like to look at two things. One is how to practice boom and zooming energy fighting, something I've not covered before. And second, I just wanted to have another look again at the SC5. The reason I want to do this um, is because I've been playing around on a Flying Circus Early Access and I found that the, uh, the SPAD-13, the main energy fighter currently available, I'm struggling with the energy retention on that bird. I've had uh, a few other um, fellow simmers say that they sort of fit in the new engine, that it doesn't quite retain energy as well as it did in Rise of Flight. And so I thought I'd just have a look back at the SE5, which is due to be released soon on Flying Circus. Getting started with practicing. The first thing you want to do, particularly with the SE5, is to sort your curves, your response curves in Rise of Flight this is. Um, have a look at one of my previous videos, I take you through how to set this up. This is just my configuration here uh, in the options in Rise of Flight. Um, a lot of you have the, that problem that I had initially with the SE5's nose and the elevator trim. So there we go, that's, that's what I use. Um, what I, where I like to practice is in the quick missions. Uh, first thing to do, obviously select your plane and make sure you start with at least 500 meters above the bandit. Next thing, always practice against that ace skill. Um, the AI is actually pretty damn good in Rise of Flight um, on ace. It's rubbish at energy fighting but pretty good at nosing up and as close as you'll get to uh, fighting humans. I personally think the AI in Rise of Flight is actually better than um, any of the other sims that I fly, including Battle of Stalingrad. One thing here, take off the bombs. I, I talked about this before. For some reason, um, by default, the SE5 is equipped with bombs. Our checklist for practicing, start above the bandit, idle your throttle, set the stabilizer to nose down, and make sure you aim on target as soon as possible. I'm just going to show you here an example of me practicing against a DR1 uh, AI on ace. You'll see here, start above, idle that throttle and I get guns on as soon as possible. It might seem like you've got lots of time to learn, line up your, uh, your shot, but as you accelerate down in the, uh, in the dive you will accelerate very very quickly and you will close very quickly with bandit. After that first attack, first thing we do is we regain as much energy as possible, sweep up and then come back down again with a hammerhead manoeuvre. Um, you can google that if you want to find out what that is. You'll see I'm also very smooth with my manoeuvres. You want to be careful not to shed those wings. It's a very sensitive aircraft. Next important thing here is I try and keep the manoeuvres already always rolling manoeuvres or vertical. So I'm up or I'm rolling. Um, the SC5 has an excellent roll rate. So when they start to turn, if you're above them and diving on them, you essentially roll to turn. So you can see here that if the uh, DR1 has an excellent turn rate on the horizontal. Um, you can turn with them by rolling. It's a bit of a... It uh, takes a little bit of readjusting your thinking to, to, to fly and think like this. It's something I've only really recently started to master and it's quite difficult. There are some instances when you're doing this kind of flying where you can start to bring in some of that horizontal turning but only when you know that you've got enough energy to then pull back up again into a position where they will not be able to nose up and get a shot off you see here that even when I'm being extremely cautious, I'm still occasionally getting, um, getting shot. Another rule that I try to employ is get that killing blow in the first pass. I don't mean killing the pilot, I mean doing vital damage, so causing a fuel leak, hitting the engine, so that the bandit will drop out of the sky within minutes. I can choose to keep engaging or I can hover above them and wait for them to fall out of the sky. Don't always expect the quick kill with this flying method, you have to be patient. So let's take a look at that in external. My good friend Requiem uh, did this with his videos going back some years so I thought um, I'd copy it. In this instance it's a very good way to demonstrate that converting that potential energy of the height into that kinetic energy of, as you dive and those smooth lines as you pull up. It's quite an elegant um, way of flying and it draws quite uh, beautiful um, patterns through the air, these long lines, very very smooth. You watch the I've got my first pass, I've done some uh, vital damage and I'm sweeping back up again. You'll notice the AI in Rise of Flight is quite good at the, uh, the nosing up, uh, when so it makes them a very good opponent to practice against to prepare you for what happens in multiplayer. Um, it's also of a good defence if you want to um, 
fight against someone who's moving on zooming on you is to uh, get enough energy and enough momentum to nose up by uh, falling into a dive, pulling up and then taking some shots. Um, as the boom and zoomer you want to try and make sure that you're just that bit too high um, and putting constant pressure on the bandits so that they're not able to um, nose up and get that vital shot on you. I just want to make the point this is not an easy thing to do. Just to make that point I'm going to show you the various takes I had to make um, and cock ups whilst trying to provide this footage. First common mistake is the um, ripping off the wings. So I was a little too aggressive and you've just got to treat it like a newborn baby. Second thing, common mistake, is you're lining up that, uh, that shot, um, you're misjudging how close you are and you headbutt them and smash and kill both of you. And then lastly there's the, um, the old one of not uh, having enough energy to build up enough height so that in that climb away um, it, it leaves you vulnerable. And again, this just, it just takes experience um, and sometimes a bit of luck as well. Um, if you really want to um, practice against um, a challenging opponent, do, do take on the D7F on ace mode uh, in Rise of Flight Quick Mission. I can tell you right now, it is not easy, um, as you can see here, common mistake follows. Now time to put my money where my mouth is and go up against some human beings. So I've just spent about an hour, an hour and a half of doing nothing but uh, quick missions spawning um, 500 metres or more above a DR1 or a D7F and diving on them and practising again, 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 again until I felt confident that 90% uh, of the time I was going to succeed against that bandit. I wouldn't recommend practising purely in multiplayer. If you do, chances are you're probably not going to do um, fantastically well and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to give up. At least with the quick mission, you can quickly hit restart, spawn again above uh, the bandit time and time again, so you don't have to worry about getting that climb above them, uh, getting an isolated bandit, uh, and then dealing with uh, having to take off again and all of that. Um, here, um, just showing you, hopefully you'll see that the way I'm flying here is very similar to the way that I was in that quick mission example. There's a little bit of um, horizontal turning here, very gentle, but I'm using that to roll into a dive uh, and using the roll to turn and trying to get those angled shots. Don't feel that you need to engage on every single pass. If you don't think you're going to get the shot, if you think you're going to have to do too much horizontal manoeuvring, pull up, regain the energy, try again, uh, nothing lost. In this particular engagement, the guy got a bit frustrated with me boom and zooming at him, um, and he'd already been damaged, his aircraft was probably going to go down in a few minutes, so he's thought, um, I'm going to take on and um, go after someone else. Um, so he spotted, I think, a Newport uh, and just ignored me. And by doing that, he's left his six vulnerable. Um, here's a good example there of that roll rather than the horizontal turn. Didn't manage to get the shot, but was able to pull back, uh, uh, put up again, regain some height and pull down again. Uh, and here I am able to get some shots here. And I've not put in too much of that uh, horizontal manoeuvre. So it's... It just takes a bit of practice to understanding how much of that horizontal you can put uh, into your attacks. Um, it, it is very much a wearing down process. A frustration many of you are going to have is that because you're not getting that instant kill, other people are going to wade in and try and get that killing blow. Teamwork makes the dream work sometimes. Uh, this is one of my friends, I'm not going to name them. Uh, they've spotted this vulnerable DR1 uh, and they've made a parcel. That's fine. Uh, in this instance, um, he's actually kind of helped me out um, because it's given the DR1 something to concentrate on uh, and um, enabled me to keep flying around above them and line myself up for the, uh, the killing shot. See, so again, I'm repeatedly going up, um, regaining energy and looping back down again until I'm confident that I'm going to get the shot or I want to sacrifice a bit of that, that energy. Getting a few shots there, doing more damage. This guy, is he's seriously uh, damaged now. If this was earlier on in the engagement, I would probably uh, try and stay as high above the bandit as possible. But I know that this guy is wounded. I can see the black puffs that there's oil uh, flying into his face right now. Uh, there's a fuel leak. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I, I can do a bit more horizontal manoeuvring like I'm just watching him do there. I don't keep on following through um, and burn off all of my energy. I, um, I do try and regain a bit here. Um, I could have, if, if I'd seen him turning towards me, I might have been tempted to disengage. Some people call that running. 
it's not running, it's the fact that you've lost your advantage, it's the fact that you're a pretty easy meet for the DR1. Finally, he's given up, um, maybe he was about to land, but he's flying straight, probably couldn't see anything, so I'm able to finish the poor chap off. Um, if he was landing, I probably wouldn't have done that, but there we go, kill cool, uh, cheek. Just to prove I'm not completely full of hot air and crap, I'm, uh, I've got the external here, um, and you hopefully will see there's a lot of similarities in these curves that I'm cutting through the air um, to uh, the example on the quick missions. So I put into practice what I've been practicing. So I've been practicing these sweeping maneuvers, coming back up above that bandit, um, regain that energy, and then going back to make another attack, repeated attacks, wearing them down um, bit by bit. There are some pilots, very few. There's one guy called Winged Warrior, some of you may come across, um, who is unbelievable, who nine times out of ten will get the killing blow on that first dive, regardless of the evasive of the bandit. I'm not good enough to do that. I've been flying Rise of Flight for three, four years now, and I'm still not at that level. The reason I actually started flying Boom and Zoom is that I got so frustrated with the amazing manoeuvrability on the horizontal with a DR1. It was very rare I could beat the DR1, um, like I'm doing right now, um, in, in a turn fight. Um, sometimes with the pup I got lucky, but it, I just got so frustrated with it, I thought there had to be a better way. And so this is why I learned to or try to learn how to do this. In terms of evading being boom and zooms, uh, in the same session I had a really good encounter with one of my friends. Uh, again, not going to name them, they know who they are. Somebody who um, is trying to learn, trying to improve their flying. Um, actually had a very good kill in a, a Newport 11 versus a DR1 that really impressed me where um, they were turning, turning, and when they were up, no longer able to maintain the turn of the DR1, they let them get back towards their six and then did a quick scissor using their, their roll rate uh, to get back on the six of the band. Um, in the case of this guy, he's, he's kind of scissoring. So rather than just watching for me to dive and then turning and then getting into a kind of falling diving turn and pulling up to, to, to nose up, um, he starts to turn, then turns the other way. So a part of the energy fighting is it's, you can see, it uses a lot of lines, a lot of these smooth lines. And if the bandit manoeuvres more than once, so if he performs two turns or, or two manoeuvres, it becomes quite difficult to track them. And he's also not losing height. So one of the disadvantages of nosing up, uh, so doing that kind of falling dive and nosing up to shoot, is that often that involves me being able to push the bandit down towards the ground. So this is quite a good tactic. It's, it's kind of a Mexican standoff here, so it takes quite a long time for me to be able to get a shot. You'll we'll see here, I get lucky. Uh, he, he tells me afterwards I've gotten sort of quite a, a bad wounding there of the pilot, so he's pretty buggered. Uh, one of those rolling turns where I was finally able to nip in, but I got quite lucky. And up to that point, um, there wasn't really anyone with the advantage one over the other. If he'd been in the D7F, he could have used these, these, this manoeuvring to, to gradually climb and get a co-altitude. And that's something that's happened to me a few times and something sometimes the AI does as well um, in my supply. You'll see here that eventually I do get a little bit more confident and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's wounded. So I'm going to get stuck into these horizontal turns up to a point. If I hadn't have delivered a, a blow here that was significant or fatal, um, then I would have uh, disengaged and I would have um, created separation. In this case, um, I, I put in some rounds where he's, I think he said it's that stage three or four wounding where it's one off death, so he loses control, ends up in a nosedive and isn't able to pull up out of it. But up until that point, um, I got lucky um, and he was performing pretty well. As I say, if he'd been a, in the Fokker, the dreaded D7F with that amazing um, engine, uh, then I would have been uh, in serious trouble. I hope some of you have found this useful. Learning how to learn, learning how to practice isn't the most exciting thing in the world. I can think of analogies for those of you who play musical instruments and you have to practice your scales just going -na 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 -na, again and again and again. Not very exciting but actually helps you to build the techniques that you can use when you're playing your final songs and your final pieces. All you want to do is play those songs and those pieces but it does actually help you. I personally find that it helps me. 
As I said, the quick missions enable you to set up situations that you can quickly load into and do again and again that are hard to engineer in real life multiplayer, such as finding a lone bandit, being able to climb above them, uh, and then not being engaged um, repeatedly by someone else and stealing your kill. I hope some of you found that useful. Salute to you all and see you in the skies.